Hey, good morning, guys. Good morning. It is um, it is early. It is early, early. It's six six o'clock here this morning, and um, six a.m. So um, what I wanted to do this morning? I got a busy Friday, but I promised um, you know, if you drop comments and in a post I did that I would um. I would answer some of your questions and try to help you with some of your problems. So what I thought I would do is like, since it's such a busy day, I would just go ahead and get out of the way, like six o'clock in the morning. You guys can watch it later if you want and whatever you guys want to do. Um, so, so the first thing that, um, that I want to talk about this morning, one of the first questions, what I did was I had like 20, 20 questions. Um, there were a few that were duplicate and there were some that were, um, not, but, um, what I did was picked out the ones that I thought would would benefit the most people. And um, number one was uh, sorry, I'm drinking some coffee. But um, number one was I thought one that just affected a lot of agents when they started getting on the phone was just overcoming fear. And um, uh, fear sucks. It sucks to have that feeling of being worried about what you're going to do or how you're going to do it or, you know, whatever it is, whether it's bills or getting on the phone or, you know, whatever. Now, um, I'm going to share a couple of strategies with you. One of the, one of the strategies that, um, that I've used with a lot of stuff is, um, when, when I'm overcoming fear, there's something I'm worried about or afraid of, I start looking at like, you know, what am I more afraid of? You know, uh, for example, like, like a great example is, you know, that fear of getting on the phone, right? What is worse than getting on the phone? Um, identify the things you're the most scared of. Like, you know, maybe it's going back to that job that you had before. Uh, maybe it's failing, you know, failing out of the real estate business and your, your spouse, significant other telling you that, Oh, you're a, you know, you're a loser. I know that you, I told you that this was going to happen. I told you that it was hard. I told you that you couldn't do it. You know, maybe that's a greater fear. Maybe I'll, I'll tell you one of the things for me is, is, um, you know, we've got a baby and, and I don't want to tell my little girl that, Hey, look, um, you know, now mom and daddy can't do that because we don't have the money, you know, um, or yeah, we can't let you do this because it, and it'd be something that's good for her. You know what I mean? Or something that we want her to do but we can't do it because, oh, we don't have the money, you know, things like that. So I look at what fear, um, you know, what fears do I have that are greater than, and I mean, I'll tell you, if your fear is getting over the, getting on the phone, I mean, one of the things that I can tell you for sure is that um, I've been making calls for, gosh, going on 14 years now. Um, I've never had anybody try to beat me up in Walmart. <laughs> Um, I've never had anybody really like recognize me that I didn't know um, for making calls. You know, I've never had, um, you know, the times that I can really remember somebody being mean to me um, are very, very, uh, very small. I mean, after a while, like making calls, I've just been I've been so committed to the process versus the results of each call. And it takes a little time. and It takes a little practice to get to um, get that. But I think one of the things that that's like one of the most important things that we can have is self-awareness. And um, when we figure out that we were, we're aware of that problem or we're aware of that fear, then um, it makes it a lot easier to overcome that. Um, another strategy that, that I've used and I've heard over and over, and I think it's helped a lot of agents in my group coaching is, um, is making a gratitude list, you know, um, that list of things. And I mean, it can be, it can be a hundred things. It can be, you know, 10 things. It can be, you know, whatever, whatever you want to be. Hey guys, I see we got some people on at six o'clock in the morning. Um, how about comment? Tell me, tell me good morning. Where are you from? That sort of stuff. But, um, you know, uh, that gratitude list. Yeah. Uh, here, here's the thing. Tony Robbins says, Tony Robbins says this and Jack Canfield says this and, uh, I think I heard Jim Rohn say this. I listen to stuff all the time. And they said that you can't have you, your heart, your mind can't be full of gratitude and fear at the same time. They can't inhabit that, that mental space. So, um, so with that being said, you can't, 
have that feeling of fear, that feeling of gratitude at the same time. So the gratitude list is basically where you make a list of things that you're, you're really grateful for, you know, um, you know, you're, I'm grateful that we live, you know, in a great little town close to the beach and, you know, I'm grateful for friends and family. You just keep going with the list, you know, and you, you name like 20, 30 things, you know, I mean, it can even get to the point that's, you know, kind of dumb, you know, I'm thankful. I'm thankful for, you know, whatever it is, I'm thankful for my dog, but you just keep going with the list. But that feeling of gratitude and reviewing that, that gratitude list makes that fear go away. So, I mean, that's a couple of strategies. Um, You know, the third strategy I can tell you is that, and this has always worked for me really well when I was worried about something or scared about something is that when I, um, when I learned more about it, right. When I learned that you, a process, when I learned, you know, all the details that go into it, when I learned that other people are doing the same thing and it's working for them, you know, and then I went and talked to them and things like that. Um, that's always really, really helped me too, because, you know, the more you learn, the more you educate yourself about something in particular, all of a sudden that thing really isn't that scary anymore. You know, so um, that's, that's a few things I've learned uh, about overcoming fear and just strat strategies to overcome fear. But, you know, once you get, once you get a script and you're practicing your script, you know, over and over again, and then you figure out what to do at the listing appointment. Um, because I'll, I'll tell you, I've learned this, there's two. This is one of the things I've learned from my group coaching is that that a lot of agents aren't really scared of getting no's on the phone, right? They can make calls all day and they get no's. And um, they're not really worried about that. What they're worried about is that that yes. They're like, oh, shit, I got a, somebody that wants to set a listing appointment. I mean, uh, it's, it's kind of funny. I had somebody that wants me to come to their house and do a listing. What do I do? What do I do? So, um, but the more you like have a process and the more that you, um, you learn about that process and about that specific thing, the more that fear goes away, the more you practice your scripts, the more you practice your dialogues, the more you practice what you're doing at the listing appointment, all that fear just kind of melts away. So the next thing that, uh, I see agents talk about, or I see agents, um, in that list was, uh, was time management. And um, this is kind of funny. Uh, I've been doing some, some weekly surveys with my group coaching and I've seen this like three or four times in those comments. And then when we did the weekly survey last week, every week we've done the weekly survey, you know, let's just say, for example, if 20 people filled out, there would be um, 10 that had something about, you know, basically time blocking, time management. Um, really, you know, the thing that, that most people have a problem with isn't so much time management as it's time choices. You know, they pick things that just that they're going to do that just don't make sense to their business. I mean, um, <laughs> click the uh, click the little little frowning face button if that if you've ever had that to happen. You know, you um, you pick something that just don't really have anything to do with your real estate business. And um, it sucks. I mean, this is one of the reasons why I always tell agents like, hey, you got to start making calls at eight o'clock in the morning. If you wait till nine, and I don't know why agents want to wait till nine. I mean, what are you doing between eight o'clock and nine o'clock? They can't wait till, you know, 10. You know what I mean? They can't wait two hours. But if you, if I start at eight um, o'clock, then, you know, the day's just getting going. I can start making calls at eight o'clock on the dot. And I can make calls to 10 and I don't answer my phone or my phone's laying upside down or I don't respond to anything. I mean, we're, we're not heart surgeons. We're not like working for EMS. We're not firefighters. You know, most of the problems that we have in the real estate industry can wait. Honestly, they can wait until the afternoon. We, we're not, um, you know, we're, we're not technically saving lives. I mean, you know, people might think, oh, you sold my house. You're a lifesaver. Uh, yeah, but you're not, we're not doing heart surgery, not putting out fires. We're not rescuing puppies, you know, um, most emergencies in the real estate business can wait a few hours. They can wait two hours on you for sure. I can tell you that for sure. They can wait two hours. Um, that, uh, you know, if they, uh, if they need heart surgery or they need, um, 
you know, the house is on fire. I mean, honestly, we're not the person to call anyway. So if you start calling at eight o'clock in the morning, you can, you don't have anything that's going to get in your way between that, like eight and 10. Like if you really control your morning, it's really easy to like control it. If you control it from the start. Okay. If you wait until, um, if you wait until like nine o'clock to get going, then it's really going to suck. You've given your, your life and your day and everything. You've given an hour for things to get in the way. And, um, and I mean, my experience is that if I give it, if I break away from my day and I give things an hour to slip in, then my whole day is going. Next thing I know it's two o'clock in the afternoon and, you know, the day is over. But, um, if you want to get really good at prospecting, you really want to stick to your schedule, put it in, put prospecting in your schedule first. Okay. Choose to put that in there first, because if you put it in there first and you don't let anything get involved in it, then the afternoon, you know, or afternoon or after, or you do all, all your other stuff. Right. Okay. Um, the, the biggest strategy that I can tell people to do is, is kind of, uh, I think I talk about this in my book, How to Be a Fismo Master. I know I talk about it over and over again in, in um, my group coaching and stuff. Man, we got some other people on the uh, – other people coming. I actually got a lot of people coming on. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, put in the comments, good morning, and where you're from. But uh, so one of the things that I, I teach agents is the first thing you need to put into your plan is your family time. Like, for example, I mean, we got Christmas right here in a couple weeks. Okay. So if you're just going to do your schedule for the last two weeks of the year, which I think you should, I think all of you should have like a two week, a two week business plan. And that two week business plan should be basically this last part of the year. If you want to avoid like a lot of competition with, um, with expires and for sale owners, and you really want to set yourself up like solid, you've waited till now. I would um, plan the next two weeks. I'd figure out the days you're going to work, the days you're not going to work. And I would work every day I could, except for Christmas. I wouldn't work Christmas Eve, Christmas Day. And actually, I'd probably work the day after Christmas. If you're behind on your goals or you really hadn't set yourself up for 2018. And I would um, I would take and I'd co start calling. I'd call all the expireds from 2017, all the for sale owners from 2017. That's what I do. To really, really get going. So, um, but with time blocking, I mean, the first thing you want to do is put all your family commitments in there because when you know your business life and your family life collide, uh, you're, you're probably gonna, you're going to have problems. I mean, that's that we all know that. Well, only one thing's going to survive: either it's going to be your family life or your business. And usually, um, you know, but it's going to cause a lot of problems if your business and family are are um, you're having problems with them. If they're if they're one thing's affecting the other, um, now the second thing you put in is all of your. Um, now the first thing's family time. You know, you're taking the kids to school. You know, do you have date night? Do you have whatever it is? Okay, the second thing is what what other um, like business commitments do you have? You know, um, things that are non negotiable like continuing education. Do you have anything like that? Okay, then the number three thing you put in is your prospecting, right? And by business commitments, I'm talking about the things that, you know, they aren't going to change the time for you, right? Like continuing education or like, you know, um, gosh, what else is there? Uh, continuing education, you know, like if you're going to chamber of commerce events, uh, networking and stuff, um, that's all I can really think of this morning. They're, but they're not going to change the time for you. Number three is prospecting. And number four is just everything else. And prospecting gets their own block because, you know, here's the thing that hey, a lot of agents don't understand is that prospecting, right? That's your lead generation. That's the thing that feeds your whole business. So, and agents take that for granted. They won't set that up as a new appointment where I'm, I'll tell you guys, here, here's the truth of it. I think, I think, if you had to pick one to cancel your prospecting time or a listing appointment, I would cancel the listing appointment and go prospect. I mean, that's how important it is. Prospecting is more important than the listing appointment. And how, I mean, how many of you, 
would you miss a listing appointment, right? Would you just not show up to your listing appointment? Um, it's so crazy. I mean, we're the only industry that people can just not work on Monday. They cannot show up on Tuesday. They cannot show up on Wednesday, not really have excuse, you know, or not really a legitimate excuse. And we still, we still, we think that's fine and acceptable and we still have a job. You know, if you worked at any other job and you didn't work on Monday, you didn't work on Tuesday, you know, Wednesday, you kind of, you, you know, you worked half day on Wednesday. You had no excuse. You weren't sick. You know, your children weren't sick. Your spouse wasn't sick. Nothing, no real reason. You just didn't feel like it that at any other job, you wouldn't have a job, right? On Thursday, they would be doing interviews. <laughs> so, um, it's, it's kind of interesting, but you have to, uh, you have to put that prospecting time in and then everything else gets scheduled around that. And don't do it in the afternoon. I mean, that's something too. Like a lot of you just go, Oh, I want to, I want to prospect in the afternoon. You won't, it doesn't, you just won't do it. I, I know you won't, I won't do it. I mean, by the time I go through my whole day and I get to the afternoon, man, I'm tired. I've got beat up a little bit. I've had, you know, the stresses of the day have come into play. Uh, and, you know, I get home, we eat dinner and all that stuff. And we're playing with baby and stuff like that. We're not going to prospect at 530 in the afternoon, six o'clock anymore. You know, one time in my career, I'd do that. But it, it, even then, it was like really impractical, you know. Or I'd plan for two hours and do 30 minutes. I mean, it's just not going to happen, you know. Um, the third thing, and I mean, this is the thing that literally, that I'll, I will tell you, one of the reasons why in my career I've listed more property than probably, um, you know, lots and lots and lots of other agents is because I follow up like a machine. And honestly, I had a great follow-up system that was written out. And I kind of knew what I did to follow up with people and stuff, but... Um, until I put it all together in my follow-up day planner, I was going, man, I, no wonder. I, it's really extensive. I mean, you have to get creative. You have to get really creative with your follow-up. And you have to look for things to follow up around that have value. Okay, and what I mean by value is, is information is valuable. I mean, you guys are listening to this webinar right now or this, um, this Facebook Live because it's information that you feel is of value. Now, the general public, they feel like information, there's information of value too. And that information typically for them, especially if they want to sell their house, it's information about other houses that are selling around theirs, what they're selling for, how they're selling, what they look like, how they compare, you know, did they get what they want? Did they get more than I'm asking for? Do they get less than I'm asking for? All that stuff, all that stuff is information that um, that is valuable to the general public if they're looking to sell their house. You think about it. If you're looking to buy a car, information that's valuable for you is you look on the internet and you see what prices are there and you go to dealers and see what prices are there. Nobody just like, oh, well, a few people just like walk on the lot. Day one, they thought this morning, hey, I'm going to buy a car. They walk on the lot and make a $30,000, $50,000, $60,000, $100,000 purchase. Um, most people look around, shop around, see what the prices are, see what's going on. And these sellers are doing the same thing, I promise you, right? They're looking on, they're looking on Zillow. Some of them know more about the market than, than we do as agents. I mean, there's so much information about out there that, um, I mean, we are not, we are not the gatekeepers of information. I mean, I can tell you that for sure. Um, there's more information than, than you can believe that's out there. If we really look outside of our realtor, our realtor tools, you know, but you know, they don't, some of them don't really know that this information is true and not all of them are that tech savvy to be able to find that information. However, um, you know, following up with somebody like this time of year, I mean, December isn't a slow month. Um, you know, the competition is slow. I mean, your competition is probably down 30%. Well, the market's probably down 30% this time of year for most markets. However, your competition is probably down like 60%. So, um, with your follow-up systems, it's really, it's really important that you keep that in mind. But, you know, this time of year, you really want to follow up and just, hey, Mr. Seller, this is Jason Morris with XYZ Real Estate Company. I just want to give you a call about um, call about your, your house. Uh, and now this is a follow-up call. I really want to give you a call about your house. You know, um, this time of year, you know, we've been really busy. Um, 
There's a lot of people that are going to be off work here in the next week or two weeks. The people look in this time of year, we don't get as many showings as we do, you know, in the summer months, but people look in this time of year are, are pretty serious. The people actually look in the houses. The showings that we get are more quality showings. And you want to make sure that you relay those things to sellers. You know, a great thing um, that uh, we have here too is just overcoming these objections because, um, you know, one of the biggest objections that we're going to get this time of year is, oh, well, I've got family coming for Christmas. And, you know, as real estate agents, most of us don't think, you know, like, hey, the number one question to ask him is, hey, you got family coming for Christmas. That's fantastic. You know, I'm glad, glad you're getting to see everybody. When did they leave? Do they leave on the 26th? How about I call you on the 27th? You know, or they say, oh, after the holidays. And immediately, most of us think, oh, that's after January 1st. But it's not after January 1st. Most people, most people, the holidays are Christmas, Thanksgiving and Christmas. You know, it's not Thanksgiving, Christmas and New Year's. So if they tell you they got family coming, you know, call them on the 26th, call them on the 27th. You know what I mean? Ask them, when does the family leave? Um, I mean, it's easy questions, you know, ask for more information. Oh, oh, that's fantastic. Um, yeah, we got some family coming too. When's your family leaving? Oh, they're leaving on the 26th. Oh, fantastic. How about if I give you a call the morning of 27th? I mean, um, and then you've called and follow up. Now, this time of year, your follow-up is so important because what's going to happen to a lot of you is you're going to go out there and you're going to make calls, okay, and you're going to have meaningful conversations with people. And by meaningful conversations, I mean they're going to tell you like all their deep, dark secrets. They're going to tell you uh, all the details about their house. They're going to tell you why they want to sell it, uh, what they want to sell it for, what their motivation is. I mean, they're going to tell you everything, you know, um, and then they're going to say, yeah, we're not ready right now. Call us after the holidays. So you don't do anything. You don't send them your pre-listing package. You don't follow up. You don't call them. You don't call them next week and tell them Merry Christmas. You know, you don't, you do nothing. Okay. Three weeks from now or two weeks from now, right? It's January 1st. So January 2nd, what we're going to have, we're going to have all the new year's resolution agents. The ones that say, Oh, I'm going to start prospecting. I'm going to start prospecting in January. And the thing about those agents are, is they, um, it's just going to be a lot of them. So you're going to get lost in the clutter. I mean, you know, honestly, these people don't know you most of the time. And uh, if I don't, if you want to do business with me and I don't hear from you for two or three weeks, I just assume you don't want to do business with me anymore. You know? And um, that's how these people are too. And two, it's so easy. Like everybody's attention span is so short that it's easy for another agent. If you don't follow up with you, your potential client or your hot lead for two or three weeks, you've given like, you've given um, other agents the opportunity to get involved in your conversation. So that great meaningful conversation you had where they were hanging on all your words and they thought, wow, Jason and Morris, Jason Morris is a real estate damn genius. Um, all that's going to go away because they're going to have another agent call them. And honestly, that, that agent's going to tell them probably the same thing I've been telling them, you know? And um, it's just, and they're going to get involved in the conversation. And that's why follow-up is so important. I mean, these people that are um, that are telling you these things and they're telling you why they want to sell their house and how they want to sell it, all the all their secrets about it. And, you know, you know, sometimes it's things they don't want to disclose. You know, oh, well, I got this going on, but I don't want to tell people about it. I've had sellers do that before. I don't really want to tell people about it. And sometimes it's not even a big deal that they don't want to tell people about. But um, anyway, they told you all these secrets and then you don't you just don't call them back anymore. You know, it's kind of crazy. This is why we need a follow up system and we need a written follow up system. So, guys, um, I've been I've been uh, on Facebook Live for a little while now here this morning. And um, I appreciate you guys that have listened in. Hopefully this uh, this uh, helps some of you guys. Um and I hope you guys have a fantastic Friday and a great weekend, and I'll talk to you soon.